All right, folks, in this late video of today, Tuesday, January 11, I just want to update you based on something some of the biggest banks in the U.S. and in the world, actually, are thinking about what's going to happen when it comes to what the Federal Reserve, the central bank in the U.S. is going to do in terms of changing the monetary policy. And yes, it has to do with increasing interest rates and how that is going to affect tremendously the short positions and the short sellers, forcing them to do what we need them to do in order to get paid. All right. So let's get into it. You can see that some of the banks here in the U.S., some Wall Street banks see four U.S. interest rate hikes this year. This is a picture of Goldman Sachs and they said, well, Goldman Sachs expect the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates full time this year and begin the process of reducing its balance sheet size as soon as July, joining other big banks in forecasting an aggressive tightening of U.S. monetary policy. As a matter of fact, JP Morgan also mentioned this yesterday. JP Morgan Chase, Chief Executive Officer, Jamie Dimon said on Monday, the economy is generating so much inflation that the Federal Reserve might have to raise short-term interest rates more than four times this year. So he's even more aggressive. He thinks that the Fed is going to be more aggressive than Goldman Sachs. Now, going back to the Fed, this is what Mr. Powell actually said today. He's the chairman of the central bank here in the, in the U.S., also known as the Federal Reserve. He said on Tuesday that the economy is both healthy enough and in need of a tighter monetary policy. That likely will entail interest rate hikes, meaning interest rate to go up, tapering of monthly asset purchase and a smaller balance sheet, meaning reducing the stimulus money they've been pumping into the economy since 2020. Powell also made some comments during confirmation hearing in which key senators indicated that they will be supporting him for a second term. So as far as I'm concerned this was a little bit more political uh, uh, than actually something else. But as this is what he said, it's really, really important. As we move through this year, if things develop as expected, we'll be normalizing policy, meaning we are going to end our asset purchases in March, meaning we'll be raising rates over the course of the year, he told the committee members. At some point, perhaps later this year, we'll start to allow the balance sheet to run off. And that's just the road to normalizing Policy. So normalizing policy is actually about changing this easy money policy. So what the heck does it have to do with AMC stock and the short squeeze? Well, here's the thing, folks. When you have interest rates going high, we've seen what it can do to some of the tech stocks, you know, some of the pockets of the market, especially what we call high growth or growth stocks because those are kind of the risky stocks because the companies are not making as much money already but people expect that to change in the next coming years that's why they are willing to give to pay kind of high price now to wait for that you know growth to actually make itself happen over the course of the next couple of years think about the Palantir, think about the neo the lucid the teslas you know the solar companies etc etc now those short selling companies, those hedge funds that are short selling AMC, bunch of those are liking tech stocks. Tech stocks are likely, you know, the, the heavy weight that they do have in their portfolio. But what is even more interesting and even more juicy when it comes to the short squeeze and the correlation between these interest rate hikes is that these people were expecting, these short sellers were expecting the Federal Reserve and Central Bank, the Fed, to actually do a couple Less than four interest rates, not even thinking more than four as JP Morgan is thinking here. So based on that, it's going to cost them a lot more money to sustain those short positions because if you think about it, they should have covered and they had the ability to cover even now, but even less than this, but they didn't because they were greedy. They didn't think this was going to go to $72 a share like it did, you know, back in, in June. You know, they didn't think it would go as high as $72, but it did, all right? And it has the potential to do even bigger than this. So in order for them to continue to sustain some of the margins, some of the credit, some of the loans they took to the liquidity providers, to the brokerage firms, to the banks, in order to make sure the positions were still open because they were still stubborn not to close these, 
is going to cost them a lot more money. If we think about the Fed raising interest rates more than four times, I mean, if the big banks, the guys that control Wall Street think about this being more than four times, it means it's not going to be something to take lightly. It's going to be something that's going to be heavy for the short sellers in terms of maintaining a position that is not making money. So based on this, I'm anticipating, you know, a major, major trigger in terms of margin calls, but also forcing them to cover. Not necessarily the big guys, you know, like the Citadel and the Simplex, but we want to see that domino effect. It only takes one or two, couple of them to start, you know, falling so that it can push the share price higher and higher and making it even more difficult even for the big dogs on the other side like the citadel and that's when we can see the real run-ups the real craziness happening when it comes to how high the price can go so based on this it's just a matter of time but it looks like 2022 we might see some new highs